Okay. Uh, for today, we're going to go through the process of setting up a Bitwarden password manager in your own infrastructure. Uh, for, this, for the purpose of this video, we're going to set it up on an Ubuntu 20.04 LTS uh, running on Azure. But uh, essentially, you could run that and set that up anywhere in your own infra on-prem, in your home lab, or on any of the public cloud providers. The only thing you need to be mindful with is that you need to have outgoing SMTP enabled, like uh, uh, start DLS or, or something, like either port 35 or port 587, and some hosting providers like Linode, they are shifted to blocking that by default, and they will only enable that, for example, in the case of Linode, they will only enable that when you are already a uh, customer for a minimum of three months. So enough talk. So Bitwarden, as you can see, bitwarden.com. You can go there, read all about it. You can just sign up for their free plan, uh, which is uh, for personal free uh, forever, or $10, $10 per per year for the premium account. But if the, the purpose of this is to set it up from scratch in our own infra so that we control the server and then we have our own password manager using the Bitwarden software on your own infrastructure. So basically, first, what we're going to do is uh, we, we, we need an SSH connection to the server. So in our case, this is going to be um, on Azure. So we just copy this one here. Back to the terminal and paste it here and hit enter. So we will accept the fingerprint and then we will require the password. Um, so the password for this case, let me just copy that one as well and then just paste, hit enter. And we will be authenticated. There you go. So we are already here on a VM that I sent up, uh, which runs on Ubuntu, as I said, right? And it's on Azure. So enough of this. Let's go just start with the requirements that we have. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that all the needed uh, all, the, all the needed repositories are, are loaded on Ubuntu, right? So we're going to just paste the commands here to uh, install the, the needed certificates, curl, and LSP release. Usually, they are all already included, right? So we're going to type the password again here. Um, let's go from here. Hit enter. And we will see here nothing upgrade, nothing installed, because all was already pre-installed, right? So that's the first step. After that, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we need to install Docker Engine and Docker Compose. That's the two prerequisites that we have to install before we even start. Actually, there are there's one more prerequisite before all this, which uh, you will see explained in the link that I post in the write-up. You need to set up a subdomain, ideally. So for, for my case, I have a domain. I'll call the subdomain Bitwarden dot uh, info and this will be required later on when we actually bring up the Bitwarden software um, to also automatically request a certificate from uh, Let's Encrypt and secure the, the entire setup that way. So having said all this, gonna go ahead and um, just paste this here. There you go. So as you can see, we do a curl. We basically get the keys for the PGP keys for Docker so that later on we will not have any errors when we're trying to uh, set up the repository. So next is we're going to um, copy the command to set up the stable repository, right? Then we're going to see again paste here and hit enter. And that's it, right? So as you can see, that's a command. Uh, don't worry about it if you cannot follow all this so easily, right? I, I have a write-up in my blog, which uh, it details all the commands. You can just copy paste it and set it up fairly straightforward. So 
The next thing we need to do is uh, we, we're gonna do a sudo apt get update. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and install the required packages. Docker engine and container D. So again, we're gonna use sudo. Sorry. Sorry for that. There you go. Again, we're gonna use sudo and then install the required packages. So we'll say yes here and have it installed. This will just take a couple of seconds. And after it is done, after it is done, we'll just verify the installation by uh, running up the traditional Halo World. Uh, in Docker, and that will tell us whether or not the installation was successful. Uh, a few seconds, we should be done in a moment here. Uh, seconds, hopefully. And there we go, we are done now. So what we will simply do now, very simple, uh, very simple command, we just run Docker, sorry, typo. Docker run hello dash well. Okay, sorry, of course. There we go. It cannot find the image locally, obviously, so it will pull it from the repository. And once this is done, there you go. This means that we have everything completed and installed it successfully. So the next step that we do, we need to uh, go ahead and install Docker Compose, which is also very straightforward. Uh, so we use curl again um, to, to get the latest stable release. Um, then simply uh, make the binary executable. And again, of course, the sudo is the magic word. Hold on a second. Uh, what went wrong here? And of course, the mistake was the sudo missing in the initial command. So there we go now. Now this will work. And also the sudo command with the change mode to give it the executable permissions is now okay. And the last list, just simply, we're gonna run a verification Docker compose, uh, minus minus version, and that should give us the version, and there we go. So this will be in line with the requirements. So we are actually got done now with the requirements as far as the preparation work goes, right? So next is simply, we're gonna uh, do a sudo add user, with more than, I'll set the password. And then the full name is Bitwarden user. Just leave this empty and this will be it. And correct. There we go. Um, then next is basically sudo uh, group it. Docker. Okay, Docker installs uh, and already creates a group, so we don't need to add that anymore. So the next one is very simply to add the bit one user to the Docker group, which is also done via sudo. And then just simply user mode command. There we go, it's done this. We're gonna create uh, the necessary directory. And then we're gonna change the permissions accordingly to that directory. As well. And then we're gonna change the ownership. Go. There we go. That's that, that's that done. And the next step is actually already to download the 
installation script. So again, curl command, and we already in one command also give it the correct permission. So that's gonna happen now. Done. And the after this, all there is to do is gonna use the sudo again. And then we're gonna just simply run the installer, which is in Bitwarden, sorry. So this H with the argument install. So now it will ask you for your domain. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, I have set it up already in the backend, so we will just use what I set up already. Um, having said so, uh, Bitwarden dot Ph dot info. Okay. This will ask you do you want to generate the certificate? We're gonna say yes to that. We're gonna use an email here. Net. Hit enter. And now basically it will go through the installation process. So this will take a little while. So let's pause it here and I'll get back when this is completed. So this is done. Uh, next step is we name the instance. So in our case, let's just stick with the default that is suggested here. Let's call it work. And again, it will start uh, downloading stuff and, and bringing up stuff. So I'll, I'll just let this finish and then we'll get back. And again, this is done. So now we come to the part where we need to actually go to uh, the bitone.com slash Sorry, slash host site. And here we just add the same that we have used or whatever email you can actually use. What we will do here, we create an installation ID and a key. So we'll say submit and it will generate this for us. So as you can see, we're gonna go and copy the installation ID first. Okay, we are back here at the uh, installation key entry so we're gonna copy this again here and gonna go back here and paste it and hit enter and we're gonna do the, the same with the key and paste this here and hit enter and that's pretty much it it will now finish everything and as you can see uh, there's a few options here now, so um, you can either just simply uh, completely uh, bring it up now at this point, but what you would like to do, uh, and which I will not necessarily do end to end here, uh, but there's a certain file that you need to configure uh, for you to have um, email capability, right? So basically, just simply by running a VI or whatever nano or up to you whichever whichever editor you prefer and and edit this file and as you can see this file so first of all you can see the installation key and the installation ID is here so then what you need to replace here at the very bare minimum or what you would like to replace at the very bare minimum is probably the SMTP host to use whatever SMTP server you want to use. If you set up a local one, then you can use the local host. Then you need to uh, make sure the port is the correct one and the SSL uh, setting is correct, and you will have to have a username and password. And then here in the admin settings, you would want to uh, either this time or later on, add the user that you want to later have access to the admin dashboard, right? So right now, we don't have any user yet, so, so nothing to do here. So we're just going to quit this one. And therefore, we're just gonna say it warden start and wait for the first start. So this again will take a couple of seconds or depending uh, won't take too long and I'll get back to the screen once this is done. And just like that, uh, we are done with installations. You can see it will now tell you at the final installation uh, it's up and running and we see the following URL to see for yourself. Uh, I'm gonna just gonna copy this one, go back here to our Brave browser and paste this one here and hit enter. And so God will, we will arrive at the Bitwarden login screen. So right now there's obviously no user created, so you can now create a new account. 
we're gonna use uh, again our simple account here and then whatever and then the password we're gonna set something simple as well yeah i know it's weak but we use it anyway the sake of purpose oh, of course when you do this for yourself then please select a very strong master password obviously like with any password manager common sense for this one just for the sake of creating this one yes we're gonna use this and that's it and uh, we're not gonna change that as it's been created now the next step would be you're gonna go in here and say gonna log in and that would be it and had we configured the email function, then we could now say send email and we would get an email to verify our email address that would give us features on top of this. And the next step that I want to show you now is, as you remember, uh, yeah, this is the file that we had to edit, right? So we're going to go here and say we add the admin. Add We would now save this. We would now say restart here instead of start, right? And I'm not going to do it now, but uh, after the restart, you then could go just simply back here to instead of this, you just select slash admin and come to the admin interface. You'd enter your email address here and you'd get a, a secure one time login link to get to the admin dashboard which is where you can see your organizations your users and stuff like that and with this yeah that's pretty much it and i hope that has showed you a little bit on what you can do with speedwarden running on your own linux be it on the cloud be it on your data center in your home lab or whatnot and i hope you'll watch me again next time with the next video take care and have a good day